Hello, my name is Ben Rajat. I am this year's general manager for the Livestock Research Unit. Hi, my name is Cassidy Bookberger and I'm this year's animal care representative. Hello, I'm Wade McCacken and I'm one of the production records managers. Hi, my name is Crystal Daniel and I am one of the production records managers. I'm Brahman Frenzel, I'm this year's reproduction manager. Hi, I'm Tori Stang and I'm one of the health managers. I'm Kelsey Rowan and I'm the other health manager. Hi, I'm Samantha Lundy, and I am this year's finance manager. Hi, I'm Mackenzie Padgett, and I'm this year's nutrition manager. I'm Cassidy Vermeulen, and I'm one of the range and forage managers. Hi, I'm Madeline Palvey, and I'm one of the range and forage managers. I'm Jessa Dumke, and I'm the mixed farm manager. I'm Frank Mzvadba, and I'm the marketing manager. I'm Morgan Evans, and I'm this year's public relations manager. I'm Jordan Cherniak, and I'm one of the research managers. Hi, I'm Elise Schulten. I'm the other research manager this year. So we'll talk about our team's vision. Um, our unit strives to continue to build an extensive, low strong maternal cow herd with a vast amount of information regarding the animal's background data and breed composition. So our uh, team is made up of 16 students from all across Canada. And uh, this is the fourth year for the research unit. Some recommendations from last year, one of them was to purchase an RFI tested bull, move the bale grazing, wean later in the year, increase our grazing days, continue the weaning trial, and enforce a more strict calling criteria on our mature cow herd. So a few of our accomplishments this year was moving our bale grazing, which we did in February. Um, we weaned a bit later this year, um, which we did in November. Increasing our grazing days, which brings us closer to our goal of 365 days. And we used a, a more strict culling criteria for our cows. Um, a few team goals that we had this year was promoting the research at Lake Landmore, being more open-minded to ma different management practices, and understanding demands of producers and customers with the cattle we market. Some of our herd goals this year was feed efficiency for selecting our replacement heifers, having a good calving ease and maternal traits with our 20% Hereford and 80% Angus, and keeping uh, consistency in our KPIs. For our SWOT analysis, our strengths were our genetic information, grazing days, and our team worth ethic. Our weaknesses were our communication within the group, our biosecurity, and our land base. Our opportunities were increased animal data, providing new and insightful information to producers and the promotion of our ice herd. Our threats are uh, public precipitation, land base, feed availability, environmental conditions. And for our KPIs, our herd from uh, 2019 didn't quite reach up to industry standard, but we're predicted to meet that in 2020. Our open rate was slightly above industry standard in 2019, but for 2020, that'll be up to industry standard. Um, our uh, calving days were uh, slightly below, below industry standard, which is a good thing. And then our predicted for uh, calving days for 2020 is 98 days since we had calves earlier this year. And our death loss was at zero in 2019, but that's predicted to be uh, industry standard for 2020. Our herd is known as the ICE herd. ICE stands for Information Collection Extension. Our herd consists of 66 cows and nine bred heifers. We also plan to keep 10 replacement heifers from our current 36 yearlings. And we have one Hereford bull. Part of my job this year is to manage the herd checks account. 
Herd Tracks is a software program we use to keep better records of our herd. Any event with our herd, such as weaning, weigh days, and vaccinations, are put into Herd Tracks. A new thing this year is all beef teams have agreed to change our numbering system for calving season. So each team will have their own set of numbers. Starting this year, our calves will be numbered 300 through 400. This allows each team to keep a more consistent records as all beef teams share a Herd Tracks account. After listening to last year's recommendation to buy an RFI-tested bull, we listed possible producers that we thought that would have bulls that matched our criteria. I looked at some bulls, but ultimately put it to a vote within the team, and the vote came back to not buy a bull. Some of the reasoning behind it was that we have enough bull power on campus between the three beef teams, and finding a bull that met all of our criteria outweighed the benefit. Reproduction updates. Our bulls were pulled mid-September and were in for a total of three cycles. Our cows were preg checked at the end of October, forehead were open, and during this time we called three others based on butter quality, feet, and temperament. As a team, we made a replacement heifer selection criteria list, and we have 10 heifers that we are planning to keep. We sold four red heifers on beef day, and the selection criteria was similar with choosing low to moderate RFI tested heifers with maternal traits, but we also chose our most Angus influenced heifers that we thought were uniform. Groups are being made based on breed composition and calving is to start May 1st for our herd, but we have had two calves in March due to the neighbor's bull getting out last summer. We chose to give our cows pre-calving vaccines so it allow them to build up their immune system to make sure they had enough antibodies to fight off any diseases. We vaccinated our heifers on February 25th with Scourguard 4KC and they got their three-week booster on March 18th. The cows also got vaccinated on March 18th with Scourguard 4KC along with Ultravac 7. This semester we have been lucky in that we haven't had any big health problems with our herd while well, compared to last year when we had unexpected sickness with our one quiet wean group where we had to mass treat to stop the spread and ease symptoms, one of the animals we had to treat was a steer that was showing signs of labored breathing and slight depression as well. Upon taking his temperature and seeing a fever, we decided to treat him with Resflor to help ease the pressure on the lungs and have antibiotics as well. We also had a heifer who had enlarged mass on her shoulder neck area and upon further examination, it was not infectious, but just an inflamed region that could either be from fighting or slipping on some ice. We treated her with Medicam to help ease the swelling and help decrease chance of soreness. This slide consists of our three main sources of income, starting with our heifer sales with a total of 38,000. This is from last year's heifer calves that were sold in our fiscal year. We also had a couple call heifers that were sold after calving. Just a note with our heifer sales, our four beef day heifers are not recorded in our fiscal year. Looking at our call cow sales with a total of $11,000, we chose to call seven females following our strict calling criteria. The largest portion of our income is $44,000 for our steer sales. The team and I made some break-evens for November, January, February, March, and April to decide which month would be most beneficial. We decided to sell, to sell our steers in February with an average of $2.16 at 630 pounds. Our total income for the year is $94,000. Looking at the expenses for the year, I'm going to go over a few of the categories we spent the most on this year. Starting with feed, this year we spent $12,000 on feed, which you can see on the slide. You can also see, but it is not recorded in the data, that we spent $32,000 on grazing and forage. If you would like further information on those details, please don't hesitate to reach out. Next, we will look at our vet and medical. Our total vet cost is $4,000. This total is a little high due to an un normal um, 
unexpected illness with one of our calves, we decided to treat that group of calves to prevent the spread. One thing that is not on the graph but is in the book um, is our beef day expenses. This year in our, is our, our team decided to sell four heifers and put them on a pellet to increase gain, which increased our total beef day expenses to $1,000. Not including beef day or pasture grazing, our total expenses for the year is $33,000. Comparing last year's team budgeted income to our income this year, there's a major difference. This year, um, we sold more cow cows during or due to our culling criteria. Our calving records between the two years show that this year we had more steers than last year's team did, leaving our steer sales to be a little bit higher. Our sales for our heifers were sold, or sorry, our heifer sales um, are roughly the same because our four sale heifers are not um, recorded like I said earlier. Our heifers sold for $2,050 each. When comparing last year's team's budgeted expenses, um, they're recently consistent through, or they are consistent throughout the year. A couple that stand out is our corral cleaning. This includes our heifers on trial manure testing, manure hauling, spreading, and harrowing. Labor and utilities are not accounted for this year as the finance managers are, were not able to meet to go over the details and calculations as a team. Finally, our breeding expenses. We did not purchase a bull this year, therefore the $13,000 was not touched. We added semen testing and preg testing for next year's teams to have as a budget. I would like to bring your attention to the column labeled as purchase. That is for our bull purchase and B rental is for bull rental. Our cost of production this year is showing how we stack compared to industry. The total production cost per cow for the ice herd is $828 and industry is $931. The profit per pound of calf for the ice herd is 98 cents and industry is $1.09. Our data is lo lower than industry standards this year because we were fortunate enough to have the opportunity to put our cows on swath grazing. This alleviated for a proportion of our grazing costs. Our calves post weaning ration was from December to January. The ration was high in forage to prevent acidosis and promote rumen development during this time. We fed both of our steers and our heifers this ration. It consisted of 22 pounds barley silage, four pounds straw, and one pound of barley grain, with one pound of a 10% feedlot supplement. Our predicted average daily gain was 2.4 pounds, but actually it was around one pound. This was due to the ration being so high in forage and much gut fill. It cost 83 cents per head per day. The current ration our calves are on, they started mid-January. We chose this ration to increase daily gains due to being fed more silage and a better supplement. We wanted an easy transition from our previous ration, and it consisted of seven pounds hay, 13 pounds barley silage, 15 pounds corn silage, one pound barley grain, and 0.8 pounds of the 3620 bullseye supplement. Cowboys predicted our average daily gain at 2.1 pounds per head per day. However, our actual average daily gain was around 1.2 pounds, and this was calculated from January 20th to April 9th. Again, our lower average daily gain was due to gut fill. However, we are okay with this because we want our replacements and our cow herds to be low maintenance and moderate cattle. This costs $1.41 per head per day. Our beef day heifers, we decided to develop them differently. Instead of being fed a total mixed ration, they were fed a partial mixed ration. We brought them in from corn grazing earlier to allow for more control over our gains. We also fed free choice forage and we fed pellets once daily. This way of feeding allowed for more control during the feed period. Our ration consisted of two pounds 
of a 14% developer from Bullseye, 15 pounds of hay, and 30 pounds barley silage. We fed our pellet once daily during health checks. Our average daily gain was predicted at two pounds per day. However, we did not get an actual average daily gain as we didn't weigh the heifers when they were off feed. We were pleased with our results as it allowed for more control on gains, it got the heifers quieter, more team involvement, and a better experience for those touring and our buyer. This ration cost $2.36 per head per day. For mineral, our cows are on mineral year round. However, it differs the time of year and what they're on for feed. For corn grazing, we predicted that our calcium would be low, so we decided to supplement by adding limestone in our bullseye swap grazing mineral. We fed 0.5 pounds mineral to 0.3 pounds limestone, which gave us a calcium phosphorus ratio of two to one. For bale grazing, our cows are back on bullseye swap grazing mineral, and we are feeding this because it was left over from swap grazing and it works well with high forage diets. When our cows go out to pasture, they will be given 20% protein tubs until the grass picks up. However, these tubs do not contain enough minerals, so we will be giving a free choice bullseye summer mix mineral. For salt, our cows are on cobalt salt blocks year round. However, we plan to do a fly control trial during calving with fly tags and garlic salt. Cows will be randomized to see who gets a fly tag and who gets garlic salt in our smart feed box. The cows with fly tags will get cobalt salt. As an extensive herd, one of our main goals is grazing 365 days of the year. This year, our winter grazing consisted of swath grazing, corn grazing, and bale grazing. For our pasture grazing this year, we were able to graze from April to November 27th, which was 227 days. Because of the weather and the precipitation we got this spring, it increased our forage quality on our pastures. We found it cost 64 cents per head per day and an opportunity cost of 56 cents per head per day. This is taking into account that, is, that it is about $1.20 per head per day for an industry average. Our herd started swath grazing on November 27th. They were grazing with the purebred and commercial herds, which was the first time all three beef herds have grazed together. They grazed the regrowth from barley silage, which was originally supposed to be baled for grain feed, but it could not be baled because it was too wet. We moved our cows from swath grazing on January 23rd, so our herd grazed for 58 days, and the cost of swath grazing was 66 cents per head per day. For corn grazing this year, we originally projected them to be out on the corn for about 45 days. But our grazing time was less because of the cold weather and that our cows also broke through the electric fence in the first two paddocks. This increased our grazing cost to 78 cents per head per day. And this is taking into account that it was a total of $2,000 for seeding and equipment. For bale grazing this year, our cows are currently on LC 15 and 16. We divided the pasture into three paddocks with 12 hay and six barley bales in each paddock. Once finished the paddocks, we will haul out more bales into them. We have projected that they will stay there till April 15th, but this is all depending on the weather. We have found that it is a $2.68 per head per day taking into account that bale price was $95 and we are using about 113 bales. Our summer plans are to graze LCP22, which is also our calving pasture from April 15th to June 21st, which is 67 days. Then we will move to LCP24, from June 22nd to August 22nd, which is 62 days, and LCP 23 from August 23rd to September 15th, which is 24 days. 
However, these dates may change due to the amount of forage that is available on our pastures. As a recommendation from last year's team, we have moved where our cows bell graze from LC10 to LC15 and 16. This is due to soil samples showing excessive levels of nutrients on LC10. LC15 and 16 ended up being the best spot for this as it's one of the college's poorest producing pastures and will benefit from the manure and bale waste. We were also able to utilize the existing fences to create paddocks rather than using electric fence. Manure management is another element of the mixed farm committee, which for me involves calculating the amount of manure our herd and outside producers animals produce while on RFI trial. This year we have estimated 117 tons that will be available for crop use, which excludes manure produced while our animals are out on pasture. Calculating our manure production allows crop SMF students to plan how it will be utilized. The Mixed Farm Committee is also currently planning a project through Alice to graze LC6. Alice is also known as Alternate Land Use Services. They are an organization that helps farm, farms use their land in an alternate ways that help sustain agriculture, wildlife, and natural spaces. This area is currently only used by environmental sciences, but must start being used for agriculture to remain involved with Alice. We are planning to graze the college owned horses on LC6 for summer 2020 and look forward to eventually grazing cows or sheep there. This year we sold our steers in February and they averaged about 216 a pound. We sold them through the North Central Livestock Exchange. So this year we created a set of break-evens to help us decide when we were gonna sell our steers. Originally it was calculated that it was the most beneficial to sell them in February, or April, sorry. And then after recalculating after Christmas break, it was proven to be the most beneficial to sell in April. If you look here, you can kind of compare the profit and losses between the three months that we calculated. And you can see that February has the highest price. Beef day this year was held on March 20th, 2020. It was moved online due to the coronavirus. We sold a pen of four bread heifers and they sold for $2,000 and $50 each, and we'd like to thank Dean Martins for purchasing them. The team uses our Facebook page to not only inform our followers of trial information, but also showcase our day-to-day -day activities within the ice herd, such as weigh days, vaccinations, and moving to different grazing locations. This year, we used it as an advertising platform for our sale heifers. We did this by posting videos and the online sale catalog. Our team has had an increased number of likes, shares, and followers this past year, and we would like to continue to see this in the future. The research team was lucky enough to have our jacket sponsored. We would like to say a big thank you to Bullseye, Prairie Livestock, as well as DNN Livestock. One of our jobs is to work closely with Dr. Obioha Durana, who is the livestock, livestock research scientist for the college. This year, we had the opportunity to run three RFI trials. A residual feed intake trial is where we can measure the feed efficiency of each individual animal. So we brought in 59 speckled park bulls and 50 charlotte heifers from multiple different producers. And we also put 36 of our our ice herd heifers on trial as well. At the beginning of the year, we did a quiet wean versus traditional wean trial. So through random selection, 38 received nose flaps while others were weaned traditionally. Due to health concerns in different environments, the data was insufficient. 
Um, this year we infrared scanned our heifers. This is a new technology to measure feed efficiency and that we compare this data with the RFI data we took from the beginning. Um, this year we are also conducting a garlic salt VS fly take trial. Our cows will be randomized into two groups. One group will receive a fly tag and the other will receive garlic salt. This is to show how to, or see which one prevents pink eye. The group, uh, the group that will receive garlic salt will be, um, will be on our smart feed system on pasture. A few recommendations for next year's team are to continue to use the data, uh, or continue to obtain RFI data on our herd, use the data from the garlic and fly tag trial, conduct trials that provide valuable information to the producers, um, make, a can, make a calendar in September to plan out the semester, and can to continue looking for RFI tested bull. Just like to thank New Holland, Amy Stanley, Denise Martin, Josie Van Lent, Jeff Brown, Anthony Robertson, and Peter Wilkinson and the rest of the farm team and everyone else that helped make this year a success. If you have any questions or comments, um, please uh, put them in the comment section below. And we will get back to you. <laughs>